And showtime, ladies and gentlemen, counting down the days to phase two, phase three and beyond. Welcome to the latest edition of the Channel Pro 5-Minute Roundup, a look at news, trends, and tips for the SMB channel in five minutes or thereabouts. My name is Rich Freeman. I'm executive editor of the Channel Pro Network. I'm also a co-host of this program. I'm joined this week, as every week, by your other co-host, Eric Simpson, a business transformation and improvement consultant for MSPs and other IT providers. Uh, Eric, how's it going this week? Uh, what week is it, Rich? I can't remember. It's, they're all flowing into one. Days, weeks, hours, minutes, sleeping, wake. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> Hope you are too. I am. I am. And I'm right there with you. I can tell you with confidence, we are in a week. Beyond that, I'm not sure which one. We are in a week and we are on a day that ends in Y, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, here's something else I can tell you about this week, and it, uh, it's a perfect segue into our top story here. So earlier this week, uh, the folks at Kaseya held a virtual event. Um, now, had uh, things been a little different in the world, they actually would have held their big partner event a uh, week before last in Las Vegas. They have postponed that uh, into August, uh, and that event is still on the calendar right now. They're still uh, hoping to host that in Las Vegas uh, just in August now. But, you know, they were building towards announcements that they would have made at that show, and they went ahead and made those announcements this week. Um, and we've got a story about that up on ChannelProNetwork.com. There are new features to some of their products. There are a lot of integrations that are sort of tying those products together. And that's kind of what I want to zero in on here is um, the, the keynote that Fred Vicola, the CEO of Kaseya, delivered at the beginning of that virtual event. Um, which really spoke about the current moment that we're in and how that kind of dovetails with Kaseya strategy. Because the, the case Vicola made basically is that they are perfectly positioned for this moment in the, the history of the IT industry. Um, and, you know, essentially what he said is, look, you've got a situation where, um, you know, uh, in, in a gradual and accelerating kind of way, SMBs were moving towards the cloud, moving towards the next generation of technology. Along come the stay-at-home orders related to the uh, coronavirus, and all of a sudden that process gets supercharged, and in 60 days, entire industries are transformed. You know, doctors who, who have no other way to see patients immediately uh, embrace telehealth. Um, restaurants who cannot have uh, uh, customers inside the restaurant anymore, but have never did, done takeout before, now they're doing online ordering. And none of this is going back to the way it was. So there, there are, there's this whole um, uh, range of new demands suddenly being placed on IT providers. Um, the increased ticket volumes that MSPs were seeing back in March, those aren't going away anytime soon. And of course the economy, it's gonna be a little while before the economy is able to recover. And so the case that um, Kaseya makes is, you know, if you are an MSP, uh, these days, you need a platform to run the business on that is going to give you all the capabilities that you require to support your customers, um, that is going to enable you to be productive and efficient so that you can maintain your profit margins despite the slowing economy, um, and that is going to be cost effective as well so that you can price your services reasonably to customers who are going to have high demands but not necessarily a lot of budget to spend on managed services anymore. And you know, from the Kaseya point of view, that's exactly what they've been building for years here as they acquire companies and increasingly integrate the solutions those companies make. So you know, as we know, Kaseya has bought rapid fire tools and Unitrends and spanning and IT glue and ID agent. A lot of the announcements they made this week um, concern and have made in recent months, by the way, concern integrations, tying products from all those different vendors together. That the Kaseya argument is that makes your technicians more productive because they don't have to switch interfaces and systems as often. And the economies of scale that Kaseya has been able to realize allow them to price their products competitively. That's going to enable you as an MSP to be more profitable. So, you know, they, they, they I don't want to make it sound like they were spiking the football by any means. They, they you know, uh, Bacola freely acknowledged it's a difficult time right now. It's going to remain difficult for a while. But if you are a managed service provider, you're providing a, a truly essential service for SMBs right now. And if you're, a, say, a partner, um, you've got products that uh, you need to enable you to do that profitably. And it, it was an interesting argument. Yeah, very, very interesting. So you know, a couple of takeaways for me, Rich, was, again, just highlighting how they're really uh, leading uh, the industry from an innovation kind of a 
you know, keeping keeping the foot on the gas here. I mean, some of the announcements that Fred made uh, regarding the integrations, and I know we've talked about that at some length on previous shows about you know the the edict of spending X percent every business unit to to you know help accelerate that integration. Um, so that is definitely uh, something of note that they're just you know just accelerating and kind of leading in that regard. Um, you know, the couple of other takeaways were, you know, I love the the comment or the term I think that Mike Puglia made regarding the gap time, um, and I thought that was really really interesting when he said, "Well, we're trying to reduce the gap time for the technicians," and what he was saying basically was the time it takes for them to look up documentation, the time it takes for them to open up all these different applications and platforms and get the data that they need, um, which definitely adds time to the, you know, throughout the day. And I think his comment was that, I, I can't recall if you, if you can help me out, maybe it was like 40 or 50% savings, you know, is what they're shooting for by integrating all of their products together to in, re, dramatically reduce uh, that gap time for, te for technicians. I thought that was a really powerful kind of a perspective. And I, I hope that they use that uh, more in their marketing message, because I think that'll, that definitely resonates with technicians and engineers. And I, I think the, the precise phrase that they use at Kaseya is the space between. Um, and that's the idea of the space between these different systems. You, you need to use an RMM tool, you need to use a PSA, you need to have a documentation platform. But yeah. if you eliminate the space between them, your technicians can be that much faster. And so, for example, you know, there was an integration uh, between um, VSA, which is their RMM tool, and the IT Group documentation platform where you can remote into it. So if you're in the documentation tool, you're looking at information about a server, you want to remote into it. Instead of having to switch interfaces and go to the RMM, you just right click or whatever, and you can go straight in from the documentation tool. If you're in the RMM and you want to look up some documentation about an endpoint, you can do that without having to go over. So that's, that's that idea of, uh, of eliminating the space between. And I hope I, I'm getting this right, um, you know, because I, I don't have time to look it up here, but I, I believe the number you were referring to before is 20%. I think all right. of the different business units at Kaseya are required to dedicate 20% of their budget, their R&D budget, to uh, integrations with other yeah. Kaseya um, products and platforms. I seem to remember that as well. It was 20%. Uh, that they're going to contribute to that integration. And, and hey, um, you know, the results are, are evident from that initiative and it doesn't sound like they're slowing down at all, right? No, you know, and that, the other thing is um, what they were really doing at the virtual event this week is spotlighting changes that were part of a quarterly release cycle. So, I mean, you know, in, in three months or, or whenever, you know, at that August event, presumably they will have more to announce. So, uh, yeah, this, this will be ongoing, uh, I think. Well, another thing that will be ongoing, this was a virtual event we're talking about here, and there are going to be more of those. Um, so that has something to do with your tip of the week, Eric. Absolutely, Rich. And, you know, as, as our viewers know, Channel Pro has, has uh, conducted a virtual event very, very recently. Uh, you know, it, it might be in the cards that, that you pull another one off, Rich. You know, we'll just have to wait and see. I participated in a, in a virtual event for a distributor this week, and and, you know, the, the tip of the week here is, hey, just because you're quarantined doesn't mean you have to miss out on the experience and the value of our traditionally live in-person events. Of course, it's not exactly the same, but, you know, what I found, Rich, when I was conducting, I did kind of a whole uh, six hours, right? So it was almost, it was more than a half a day of presentations and, and delivery for this virtual event that I participated in. But what I found after hitting my stride a little bit was, you know, hey, we can use polls and, but I started really using, you know, the raise your hand feature in the, in the platform itself and the virtual platform. And it was much, much quicker and folks started responding more. And even the feedback that I got at the end was, you know, hey, it, was, it felt very, very interactive. So once I got past the stigma of speaking to a camera and started really watching the chat and watching the hands raise and putting that, that, you know, those polls in and all that, you know, the next best thing would be the ability for attendees to really almost like chat with each other. Um, that would be another level. And something tells me that, you know, if, uh, if that isn't available in some of these platforms today, um, folks are working on that right now, because as you say, we're going to see a lot more of these virtual events. So don't, you know, don't feel like you're missing out 
and miss out because there's still a tons and tons of value from participating in these events and providing your feedback and, and getting something out of it. So don't think that, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to get anything because I'm not really traveling. Well, guess what? It's even better now because you can be transported from your living room, uh, you know, virtually to an event and you get to, you know, multitask a little bit here and there and pick and choose and not have to worry about, uh, you know, checking in and out of your hotel and, and, and having the valet, you know, store your stuff on that last day. Right, Rich? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the value, a huge part of the value of uh, attending an event is learning from your peers, learning from experts like yourself, learning about and from uh, vendors. That's as important now as it was before. Um, and if, if virtual events is the way you can do that, you need to keep doing that. And as you've pointed out on previous episodes of the five minute roundup, especially if you, you have some downtime now, because maybe you're working in a vertical where there isn't a lot going on with your customers right now, here's a, a time when you can invest in the business a little bit and virtual events are a great way to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, the, the, uh, the folks that are putting on the virtual events are really going that extra mile trying to deliver as much value and as much, you know, opportunity for interactivity and being very, very creative about it. So, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, un, you know, it's, it's untested ground for a lot of us as well. So, you know, your attendance and your feedback also helps these events improve over time. Well, that's actually kind of a nice segue to our last story. We have uh, time for just one more story this week. And, you know, uh, uh, folks who are in the event business are innovating, experimenting with virtual events now, learning on the go. Uh, similar kind of deal is going on in the world of professional sports, obviously. It's going to be a little while before you can pack a stadium full of people again. But, you know, to televise an event with a bunch of empty seats is a little bit awkward. So we're hearing about um, teams mostly in Asia where things have eased up a little bit sooner than uh, is the case here, kind of experimenting with various ways to cover for that. Maybe you put signs up, uh, you know, in front of the seats that make it look like people are there. Uh, there's a South Korean soccer team that had uh, a thought about one way they could uh, deal with this particular issue. And you know what? On the drawing board, it looks perfectly good. Let's just get some mannequins. We'll put the mannequins in the seats. We'll dress them up in team clothing, and it'll look like there's folks in the stands. It won't be quite so awkward. Yet you, you got to be really careful when you place that online order, folks, because it turns out those mannequins this team got weren't actually mannequins so much as sex toys. Uh, and somebody noticed, uh, and they have now been fined uh, a lot of money, uh, basically, because, you know, the league didn't think that was all that appropriate for a family game. Uh, so, you know, nice try. I, I appreciate people trying new things. Uh, a for effort, you know, F for execution, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, I got to wonder the folks that were that were actually placed that order. Did they get the mannequin by mistake now? And they're all upset, too. So this could be, you know, a continuing story that we may need to cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to look into this. Uh, <laughs> interesting thought. Uh, well, that is uh, all the time that we have this week on the five minute roundup. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. If you like the show, you want to maybe take a look at some episodes you missed in the past, keep up with the future ones as they become available. What you want to do is go to the Channel Pro Network channel on YouTube and subscribe there. Make sure you click the little bell icon if you want to get uh, notified when a new episode becomes available. Um, to read all about the new features and the integrations we were kind of hinting at uh, that Kaseya announced this week to get all sorts of great um, business growth information for your company, go to channelpronetwork.com every day because we have got great new content for you there every day. Uh, to learn more about Eric and the work that he does with his clients, you want to go to ericsimpson.com. That is E-R-I-C-K Simpson.com. Uh, so once again, uh, we will be back next week with another episode of the Five Minute Roundup for you. Until then, folks, please enjoy the rest of your week. Eric and I are enjoying the rest of your week already. <laughs>